Hey friends, how are you doing today? I hope you're feeling blessed and staying in God's presence. And if not, I hope you feel uplifted after today's video. If you're new here, welcome to His Princess Christian Community, where we read a chapter of the Bible every day and then discuss it afterwards and in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel grow and it opens the door for more people to join our community. And while you're at it, check out the description box. We've got a lot of great stuff in there. So today we're reading Mark chapter 6, but before we get started, I wanted to say a prayer if you wouldn't mind bowing your heads with me. Dear God, thank you for bringing us together here on His Princess Christian Community. Thank you for opening the door for people to join our community, for connecting us and strengthening our bond. Thank you for opening our eyes, our ears, our hearts, and our minds to your word. Thank you for your wisdom, understanding, and clarity as we seek to interpret your word. And thank you for the courage to apply it to our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Mark chapter 6. Jesus left that part of the country and returned with his disciples to Nazareth, his hometown. The next Sabbath he began teaching in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. They asked, where did he get all this wisdom and the power to perform such miracles? Then they scoffed, he's just a carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon, and his sisters live right here among us. They were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Then Jesus told them, A prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown, and among his relatives and his own family. And because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any miracles among them except to place his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then Jesus went, into, went from village to village teaching the people, and he called his twelve disciples together and began sending them out two by two, giving them authority to cast out evil spirits. He told them to take nothing for their journey except a walking stick. No food, no traveler's bag, no money. He allowed them to wear sandals, but not to take a change of clothes. Wherever you go, he said, stay in the same house until you leave town. But if any place refuses to welcome you or listen to you, shake its dust from your feet as you leave to show you have, been, you have abandoned those people to their fate. So the disciples went out telling everyone they met to repent of their sins and turn to God, and they cast out many demons and healed many sick people, appointing them with olive oil. Herod Antipas, the king, soon heard about Jesus because everyone was talking about him. Some were saying, there, this must be John the Baptist raised from the dead. This is why he can do such miracles. Others said, he's the prophet Elijah. Still others said, he's a prophet like the other great prophets of the past. When Herod heard about Jesus, he said, John, the man I beheaded has come back from the dead. For Herod, for Herod had sent soldiers to arrest and imprison John as a favor to Herodus. She had been his brother Philip's wife, but Herod had married her. John had been telling Herod, it's against God's law for you to marry your brother's wife. So Herod Herodus bore a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But without Herod's approval, she was powerless, for Herod respected John. And knowing that he was a good and holy man, he protected him. Herod was greatly disturbed whenever he talked with John, but even so, he liked to listen to him. Herod's chance finally came on Herod's birthday. He gave a party for his high government officials, army officers, and the leading citizens of Galilee. Then his daughter, also named Herodus, came in and performed a dance that greatly pleased Herod and his guests. Ask me for anything you like, the king said to the girl, and I will give it to you. He even vowed, I will give you whatever you ask up to half my kingdom. She went out and asked her mother, what should I ask for? Her mother told her, ask for the head of John the Baptist. So the girl hurried back to the king and told him, I want the head of John the Baptist right now on a tray. Then the king deeply regretted what he had said. But because of the vows he had made in front of the guest, he couldn't refuse her. So he immediately sent an executioner to the prison to cut off John's head and bring it to him. The soldier beheaded John in the prison, brought his head on a tray and gave it to the girl, who took it to her mother. When John's disciples heard what happened, they came to get his body and buried it in a tomb. The apostles returned to Jesus from the ministry tour and told him all they had done and taught. Then Jesus said, let's go off by ourselves to a quiet place and rest a while. He said this because there were so many people coming and going that Jesus and his apostles didn't even have time to eat. So they left by boat for a quiet place 
where they ha they could be alone. But many people recognized them and saw them leaving, and people from many towns ran ahead along the shore and got there ahead of them. Jesus saw the huge crowd as he stepped from the boat, and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Late in the afternoon, his disciples came to him and said, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to a nearby farm and villages and buy something to eat. But Jesus said, You feed them. With what? they asked. We... We'd have to work for months to earn enough money to buy food for all these people. How much bread do you have? He asked. Go and find out. They came back and reported, We have five loaves of bread and two fish. Then Jesus told the disciples to have people sit down in groups on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of fifty or a hundred. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish, looked up towards heaven, and blessed them. Then, breaking those loaves into pieces, he kept giving the bread to the disciples so they could distribute it to the people. He also divided the fish for everyone to share. They all ate as much as they wanted. And afterwards, the disciples picked up twelve baskets of leftover bread and fish. A total of five thousand men and their families were fed. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and head across the lake to Bathsheba while he sent the people home. After telling everyone goodbye, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Late that night, the disciples were in their boat in the middle of the lake, and Jesus was alone on land. He saw that they were in serious trouble, rolling, rowing hard and struggling against the wind and waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came towards them, walking on water. He intended to go past them, but when they saw him walking on the water, they cried out in terror, thinking he was a ghost. They were all terrified when they saw him. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage, I am here. Then he climbed into the boat, and the wind stopped. They were totally amazed, for they still didn't understand the significance of the miracle of the loaves. Their hearts were too hard to take it in. After they had crossed the lake, they landed at Genesaret. They bought the boat to shore and climbed out. The people recognized Jesus at once, and they ran throughout the whole area, carrying sick people on mats to wherever they heard he was. Wherever he went in villages, cities, or the countryside, they brought the sick out to the marketplace. They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe, and all who touched him were healed. Amen. So what did you think of Mark chapter 6? I'm interested to hear about it in the comments below. Let me know what your insights or interpretations were on the chapter. Maybe comment your favorite verse or just say hi and let us know that you're part of the community. Okay, so Mark chapter 6 starts out where Jesus is re rejected at Nazareth. And this is just another reminder that the people who, you know, are the closest to you may find it the hardest to believe that you've changed but don't let that discourage you um, a lot of times that's what takes people back to who they used to be because they're up against all these people who just won't accept the change so it makes it hard for you to accept it as well um, so you know that's why they always tell you like when you're in recovery you know new people places and things um, and that goes for relatives too um, because sometimes it's hardest for the people who are the closest to you or the closest to the things that you used to do um, to recognize and accept the change so then the next section is Jesus sends out the 12 disciples and I just like the part where it says um, but if um, any place refuses to welcome you or listen to, shake its dust from your feet and leave to show that you have abandoned those people to their fate. So again, you know, that goes for the people in your life. If the people in your life aren't willing to accept that you've changed, if they're not willing to accept um, the, you know, good news that you're trying to share with them, then just shake the dust from your feet and, you know, leave those people to their fate. You know, you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to stress yourself out about, you know, trying to save people. You know, of course, that is our goal and our mission in life. But again, um, you know, we can only do but so much and God has to do the rest and they have to accept it. Um, so do what you can. And then if it's not accepted, shake the dust from your feet and leave, you know, just dust it off and don't worry about it anymore. So then the next section is about the death of John the Baptist. And this is important because it just shows how influential, you know, people are in our lives. Because although Herod didn't, um, you know, 
kept John in prison he still liked to listen to him and he didn't want to kill him but you know he made a vow which is another thing don't make vows they say that a lot in the Bible um, so he made a vow and he was you know basically influenced by his wife and his daughter to kill John the Baptist so you know again just remember that the people in your life and who you're entertaining and um, who you're allowing to entertain you and just be careful that they don't corrupt you or cause you to sin in any way um, the next section is Jesus feeds the 5,000 and you know I wrote up to the side thank you for being my quiet place because Jesus is my quiet place when I need peace when I need rest I go to Jesus um, but this part is talking about again about God's provision and how you know God can bless anything in your life and multiply it and we just have to have faith in that and trust in that um, and just know that it says they all ate as much as they wanted so you can be full and content and satisfied um, in the house of God as long as you you know spend time in his word have a relationship with him you know um, follow his commands um, and just continue to grow your faith then whatever you need God you can lift it up whatever you have you can lift it up towards heaven and God will bless it and multiply it um, so just do what you can with what you have and trust God for the rest um, and then um, the last section is about when um, Jesus was walking on water and it says don't be afraid take courage um, then he climbed into the boat and the wind stopped so again when you're feeling afraid when you're feeling you know like there's a lot of chaos around you just ask yourself is Jesus in my boat right now because if he was in my boat then this wind would stop and this um, this storm and this chaos would stop you know even if it was still going on going on I would be undisturbed by it and that's what's so important that we can call on Jesus and he will climb into our boat and still the storm um, we have to have that faith um, but it says they still didn't understand the significance of the miracle of the loaves their hearts were too hard to take it in so again sometimes you know in our lives you know this has happened even to the disciples that our hearts are still hard so we have to constantly pray to ask God to soften our hearts to help us overcome our unbelief to help us have more faith to remember the miracles of the past so that we can um, enjoy the miracles in the future and in our present um, so it says they begged him to so um, you know then you know he went on to other villages and it says people just begged him to at least touch the fringe of his robe and all who touched it were healed so again if you just have that little bit of faith just that little bit of faith it can go a long way um, and it can heal a lot of things in your life so that is my interpretation of mark chapter 6 i'm interested to hear what you have to say about it leave it in the comments below don't forget to like and subscribe and i hope you stay blessed stay in god's presence have a great rest of your day i love you